Hello guys, welcome to a new lecture on experimental stress analysis module 3 photoelasticity. Okay, uh, in the uh, I, Monish Badiger, assistant professor, mechanical engineering department, S.G. Balakundra Institute of Technology, Belagavi. Okay, uh, in the previous uh, sessions, we were discussing about the nature of light, what is the wave theory of light, and then optical interference, stress optic law and effect of stress in model in the plane and uh, circular polariscopes then what are isoclinics and isochromatics we have discussed okay in the today's session we will be discussing about the importance of calibration and what are the methods of calibration of the photoelastic materials okay why do we have to use the uh, these uh, calibration of photoelastic models why do we have to calibrate this particular components right so in order to find out the fringe value right fringe value of the uh, certain photoelastic material uh, which in turn helps in determining the how are the stress distribution in the particular model right so the main uh, importance of uh, doing the calibration for a particular uh, photoelastic component is to find out the sigma f that is nothing but the fringe value of that particular material which in turn helps us finding out the stress in the particular component right so what are all the types of uh, com these calibration methods we usually go through is mainly we have three types that is a simple uh, tensile specimen then beam under pure bending and circular disc under diametric compression right so <clears throat> then we'll be discussing this one by one right first we'll be taking up the simple tension specimen or simple tensile specimen right see uh, you might have done uh, these uh, simple tension specimen experiments in the material testing lab i hope you remember right usually we'll be taking up a simple tension specimen which is having a length of certain length l and it's having a certain width and a width w and h as the thickness of this particular component right so when you load these under certain loading conditions if you're taking up either in the tensile or either you might be applying the certain compression see here we'll be taking up the tensile stress component right so if you're applying the load in the tensile uh, direction right so you'll be having the sigma is equal to force per unit area right so force you may take it as a p by a right for this you have a is equal to w into h right so here i'm taking this equation sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to p by w into h p is the load applied wh is the uh, area of this particular component right if you're taking up the stresses in only one direction so in the other direction it will be zero so for that I'll be taking up this particular sigma 2 as a 0. So, by using the stress optic law, right, you can even write the equation as the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to nf divided by h. What is n here? n is nothing but the fringe order and sigma f is nothing but the fringe value and h is the thickness of this particular component, right. When you compare these two equations sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to p by h and sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to n f into n sigma f by h right then you will be writing these equations as this right then when you rearrange these equations in terms of sigma f this is what we are interested in finding out the value of the fringe right sigma f right 
the final equation for the uh, tensile specimen uh, simple st uh, simple tensile specimen is sigma f is equal to p by n to 1 by w that is where p is the load applied right and <coughs> if you are taking up n is the fringe order and w is the thickness of this plate okay then we will be moving on to the see uh, if you are taking up a graph that is pressure or uh, the load versus fringe order when uh, we increase the load on the component there will be increase in the number of the fringes at a certain stage what happens is there will be no fringe at all right so at that uh, stage the component may break right <coughs> so we'll be moving on to the next uh, method of calibration of the photoelastic component that is beam under pure bending right here we'll be taking up a rectangular Here we will be taking up a rectangular component, right? That's also having a thickness, right? H and the W as the width of the component, thickness H and the depth is W. Okay, so if you are uh, king for the uh, pure bending, here we will be applying the loads at a equal distance from the end, <coughs> right? So to find out the uh, as we are applying the loads at the end there will be moment bending moment induced in the component so to find out the bending moment uh, we know the equation mm, bending moment is equal to force applied on the component to the perpendicular distance here force is p right p is the force applied and a is the perpendicular distance right then <coughs> we have the stress equation for the beam also sigma is equal to m i by m by i into y right by substituting the value of m that is bending moment right we can write the equation as this right then when you compare this particular equation with the stress optic law right you are taking up the stress optic law right using the stress optic law when you compare this particular equation with the stress optic law equation you will be getting this equation as sigma 1 is equal to p by n into 6a by w square right where a is the perpendicular distance and w is the width or the uh, depth of the particular component right so these are the fringe orders that can be seen through the polariscope when you apply the particular load on the component right sigma f is equal to p by n into 6a by w square is the equation for the beam under pure bending right so then one of the important method that is uh, we are taking up is circular disc under diametric compression right for a circular disc of a diameter d we are taking up and shown in the figure you can see uh, the component is diametrically compressed right so what happens there will be two stresses induced as you can see in the figure right stress the x direction as well as the y direction that is nothing but uh, a tensile stress also and also there will be uh, compression stress also induced in the component right so that can be represented by the equation sigma x and sigma y 
sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, in the x direction, you can see the equation as sigma 1 is equal to 2p, where p is the load applied by h, h is the thickness of this particular component, uh, uh, d is the capital D is the diameter, d square minus 4x square divided by d square plus 4x square. This is the equation in the uh, <coughs> tensile direction. And similarly, the equation for the in the uh, uh, compression direction that is in the y direction. Similar to 2 minus 2p by pi d uh, pi d into h 4d power 4 by d square plus 4x square whole square minus 1. Right? See, uh, then uh, in the there will not be any shear stress induced. So, for that reason we will be taking up a tau x y. In the z direction there are no stresses induced. Right? See, uh, when you take up a sigma 1 minus sigma 2 when you do that. So, you will be getting the equation as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to 8p by pi d h right, into 1 minus 4x by d square divided by 1 plus 4x by d square whole square. Okay. So, right. So, if you are taking up uh, at the center, right, at the center if you are taking up the stresses, uh, that means x is equal to 0, the distance that will be uh, taken up is a 0. So, <coughs> for that reason, when you put a x as a 0 value, so you will be getting the sigma 1 and sigma 2 values as 2p by pi d h minus 6p by pi d h values. Right? Then, if you are taking up sigma 1 minus sigma 2, right? then you will be having a equation as 8p by pi d h is equal to, if you are taking up again, if you are comparing this particular equation with the stress optical equation, that is, right, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to n f n sigma f by h, right. So, you will be getting the equation as this sigma f is equal to p n by 8 pi into d. Okay. These are the certain methods of calibration for the photoelastic materials. Right. In the coming up class, we will be discussing about the uh, <coughs> uh, what are all the uh, compensation methods for the photoelastic materials. Okay. Thank you.